Philippines, welcome to Info Talk. This is your host. I am Kimberly Garcia and I am Lori Jean Percy. Hello, Lori Jean. How are you today? Actually, Kim, I am really good and I felt the excitement about today's topic. Me too. I am really excited not just the topic but to our guest. Before we introduce them, let us discuss the topic first. So today, we'll be talking about performance-based assessment, assessing effective learning outcomes, and technological and pedagogical content knowledge or data. Our today's topic is related to our guest. Really, Lori Jean? Yes, Kim. Because our guests for today's show are from the Education Department. Help me welcome our guest. They are all aspiring teachers from St. Michael College of Cargo, from the College of Teacher Education. Let's welcome! Alma May Ikasama and Jerlyn Grace Brillias. Hello Alma and Jerlyn. How are you today? We're good. good. How about you? We're good, We're good too. too. So today, we will be discussing about the performance-based assessment and how it will help you as a teacher soon. So to start off with, Jerlyn will give us a glimpse about the performance-based assessment. As an aspiring teacher, Jerlyn, how do you learn or understand the concept or nature of performance-based assessment? As for me, performance-based assessment is simply the strategy a teacher must use to measure students' ability in applying the skills, knowledge, learning for a particular subject. Typically in here, the task challenges students to use their higher order thinking skills to create a product or complete a process since this type of assessment requires students to demonstrate the knowledge and skills including the process in which they solve problems. That's quite comprehensive, Julie. Thank you. So Alma, as an aspiring teacher as well, how would you implement performance-based assessment in classroom and how would you measure this type of assessment during the teaching learning process? Okay, so in implementing performance-based assessment, a teacher must primarily have a clearly defined purpose. Now, a teacher must consider asking herself some questions like what concepts, skill, or knowledge you are trying to assess or what your students should know and at what level should your students be performing. Now, this is in order to reflect what type of activity best suits your assessment needs. And actually, um, performance-based assessments cater following activities such as group presentations, um, essays, experiments, demonstrations, and portfolios. So, as a teacher overall, we should never forget the one key feature of all performance-based assessments and that is to require students to be active participants. Um, however, um, in assessing this in the teaching learning process, we can make use of a scoring rubric, which are especially well suited for evaluating complex tasks or assignments. Now, overall, by using rubric, we are allowing our students to provide them with the opportunity to reflect upon the quality of their work and learn from their successes and failures. So, in other words, we can say that um, we are able to establish constant feedbacks with our students' performance for more progress. Thank you for the idea, Ms. Alma. It is a little detailed information that can help our audience to understand more about the performance-based assessment. Yes. All in all, performance-based assessment is a system of learning and assessment that allows students to demonstrate their knowledge and skills in learning environment that enhances their higher order skills, as well as relating to it in a real-world situation. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you, ladies, for the comprehensive and knowledgeable ideas that you have shared with us. Up next, we will be discussing about the Assessing Effective Learning Outcome when Encotel will be right back. Stay tuned! Welcome back, Info Talkers. At this time, we have another guest to be here with us. Yes, Kim. Our next guest is no other than Ms. May Magaliano. Hello, Ms. Saibel May. How are you today? Glad to be here at your show. We're glad to. Thank you. So, Ms. Ivel, can you tell us something about the idea in assessing effective learning to students? We all know learning is everywhere. 
we can learn mental skills, develop our attitudes, and acquire new physical skills as we perform the activities of our daily living. The term effective learning has only recently been defined as a learning that relates to the learner's interest, attitudes, and motivations. But the question is, why is it important to assess? Me as an educator, and especially to the future mentors, they should be interested in assessing effective variables because these variables are excellent predicators of students' future behavior. Teachers should assess a fact to remind themselves that there's more being able a successful teacher than helping students obtain highest scores and achievement tests and by that, teachers significantly affect and can help teachers teach more effectively on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, let's not also forget about the levels of effective domain. We should always remember the five levels of a victim domain and these are receiving, responding, valuing, organization, and characterization. Why do we need to know about this? It is because effective assessment measure what students will do in the future. When teacher measures children's attitudes towards the democratic process, we gain insights into how they will likely act towards the democratic system when they grow up. What a point, Kim. So, assessing effective learning helps teachers to identify students' way of learning. Yes! Thank you, Ms. Seibel, for your informative ideas about the topic. Info Talk will be right back after a short break. Stay tuned! Welcome back, Info Talkers! This time, we have another guest to be here with us. They are also one of the aspiring education students of SMCC. Help me welcome Kim, Mary Grace Alejandre, and May Ann Macajes. Hello ladies, welcome to Info Talk. How are you today? Hi Good. Kim, I feel so great to be here. Just yes. like Alejandre, of course. So ladies, Let's talk about the TPAC and its framework. So, may I ask, can I ask you about what is TPAC's framework? Can you tell something about it? How does TPAC impact its teaching and learning with technology? Basically, Kim, TPAC stands for Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge. It is a theory that was developed to explain the set of knowledge that teachers need to teach their students a subject, teach effectively, and use technology. In addition, the impact of TPAC in teaching and learning with technology is that technology is treated as if it is that technology separate from teaching and learning. Mishra and Color claim that the lack of awareness of TPAC claims technology separated and leads to four problems with using technology in the classroom. So first, there are such rapid changes in technology that it's extremely difficult to keep up with all the latest advancements in apps. The second problem is that software is designed for business and not for education. And this often means that students are learning how to use the program and not learning the content of the class. So the third problem with keeping technology separate is the situational nature of the classroom. A teacher can adjust a lesson to make sure it meets the needs of the specific group of students, but the instructional video cannot. So it's the same video every time it is played. So finally, Mishra and Color say that given technology separate places and emphasis on what and not how. So from the teacher's perspective, the lesson becomes about what technology are we going to use today? What does it say? What skills does it acquire instead of how can I teach my students? So that's it, Kim. Thank, Thank you, you, May. So, Miss Mary Grace, why is TPAC important? Yes, um, TPAC is very important because most instructors and administrators recognize the benefits technology can be in help in the classroom. Whether that we're preparing students for technology driving or helping 
to simplify course is called and district management. But to many view technology as a silver bullet to the challenges they face, it sometimes assumed consciously or not that the mere presence of digital tools will improve education. This is exactly why the DPAC framework is important. It is easy to think that adding a great LMS to your class strategy. It is going to enhance learning, but DPAC shows us that there is a relationship between technology, content, and pedagogy, and the purposeful blending of them is key. Thank you. In addition also to our guest, TPAC represents a full understanding of how to teach with technology, especially on the teacher side, on how to deliver content towards their students via a learning management system. Overall, TPAC is to understand how to use technology to teach concepts in a way that enhances students' learning experiences. Yes! Thank you ladies for the knowledge and comprehensive ideas that you have shared with us. Thank you so we'll much. We learned a lot today, right Lori Jean? Yes, Kim. That's all for this time, Info Talkers. Hope you learned something. Good day and God bless. This has been your host. I am Kimberly Garcia. And I am Lori Jean Bercy, leaving you with a motivational quote from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Never stop learning, stay rooted, and soar high!